you see someone who's really good looking. He or she is just this uh, captivating, mesmerizing person and you are just head over heels for them. They're standing there with their friends, talking away, maybe about the day's work, maybe about something else, maybe about something funny that happened. You, however, have caught their eye and you feel the nerves building up. You might have a bit of peer pressure. Your friends are saying to you, go on, go, 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 go. And you have that inner voice going off in your head saying to you, don't go, don't go, don't go. Sound familiar? Hi guys, my name is Nim, and as always, I'm here to cast a light on your shadow and to help you traverse your shadowverse journey. Approaching them, right? Something we call approach anxiety. A term that's probably been flogged around left, right and center here and there and everywhere. Approaching them, right? Something we call approach anxiety. A term that's probably been flogged around left, right and center here and there and everywhere. Um, it is a bit of a problem, particularly if you're a guy, because normally, I, brothers, I get it. I know <laughs> if you're a guy watching this and you're thinking, how do I approach, how do I approach? You make it sound so easy. It's so easy for you to sit there in front of a camera and just tell, tell us, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm joking, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Anyway, the truth of it is, nerves are inevitable, just accept it. Okay, that's the first thing I'm gonna address in this video. Nerves are inevitable, just accept it, okay? There are so many bits of information out there about how to deal with approach anxiety, and pretty much, they all pretty much seem to say the same thing, okay? This is just kind of, my sort of, if you want, take on it is pretty much going to be what the others have said. Um, however, there might be something that's a bit different. A couple of things. I'm just going to narrate this from my experience and my perspective. Hopefully, my voice can provide you that support that you need the next time you're going to approach somebody. Just before I go a bit further, I do want to mention that um, I haven't approached in a long while. Yeah, I just know uh, that I'm confident when I need to do it. Now, how do you, be, how are you able to approach somebody or go at someone, uh, just go, go for it, um, even when you haven't approached in a long time? Now, like I said, I haven't done it for a very long time. I'm actually kind of in the process of manifesting. I'm kind of in the process of actually working on myself as well. Um, and that's why I'm kind of, I'm, I'm open to dating, but it's not my most important thing right now. This is for anybody else out there who is kind of ready to date, because truth of it is everybody's in a different place in their journey. Some people say, oh, I'm ready for dating. Some people might not be ready. So, you know, if you're not ready, you can come back to this whenever you can, right? But this is when you feel when you're ready, okay? You may, have, you may have had a breakup, you've, you've gotten over your ex, you've done the inner work, you've released, you've let them go, you've cut the cord, you've done all the inner work, you've realized, you've appreciated, you've offered the gratitude as to why that person came into your life, what were they reflecting back to you, why your unintegrated part of your shadow. But dating is such uh, a thing which is really, 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 really crucial and critical because it reflects back to us what is going on to us internally. Some people are matched up with us energetically because they come into our lives to teach us. People don't appreciate that. They don't appreciate the X, right? They don't appreciate and offer the gratitude that they need to be giving their exes no matter what they've done because, um, and at this point I, don't, I do wanna say, I'm not trying to sugarcoat and say, right, if you've been with a narcissist before, if you've been with an abuser, you need to let that person continue to abuse you. Absolutely not. No way. I am not an advocate of that. You need to cut them out of your life. But what you need to see is the bigger picture rather than focusing on the minutiae, which is what has this person come into my life to teach me? Once you start to do that, you're kind of then doing the inner work. You're doing the integration work to understand and appreciate what it is that they were reflecting. So circling back to my point earlier on about nerves are inevitable. Just accept it. The question some of you may ask is why though? If you're the approacher, if you're the approacher and the other person is the approachee, if a word exists, um, usually you're gonna, if you're probably the approach, you're more likely to be the person that is male or that has more masculine, more of the masculine archetype, masculine energy in them, 
you're the one that's going to have to go and do the approaching. Now, um, just as I said, just accept that you're built in this way. However, there is a way, my new buzzword is weaponizing things. There is a way to weaponize this. How do you weaponize this in your favor? By politely reminding yourself that nervousness helps you feel alive. Think about that for a minute. And I don't, I'm, I've never, I haven't seen many people address this point. As far as I'm concerned in my, what I'm sort of my feed that I get through my YouTube channel, I don't really see anybody talking about this and advocating the fact that being nervous when approaching or doing anything can actually be used in your favor because it helps remind you that you are not alone. You are not alone, ladies and gentlemen. You are a part of um, an entire species, an entire, uh, yeah, an entire species that has nerves running through their body from head to toe. Is it normal for you to feel anxious when you're approaching? Is it normal for you to, to feel a bit, oh, butterfly-ish in your stomach? Yeah, it is, why? It's what makes you human. Understand and appreciate the psychology behind it. It is what makes you human. Our forefathers evolved from that, okay? So is it normal to feel approach anxiety? Totally. The more you accept it, the more easier it'll get. Now, approach anxiety is obviously going to be a big issue and the skill of this can be reflected and used in any other area of your life. The last video I just made was about shooting, uh, I made reference to uh, driving a car and dealing with my approach anxiety, uh, of it, my approach anxiety of approaching the fear, as it were, of actually driving a car. Uh, but how did I manage to get around that? I just faced it, I visualized it. I, I visualized and imagined myself doing it. Even right now as I'm talking about this, I'll confess, even right here in my heart chakra, in my heart space, I'm actually feeling some nervousness about the thought of, approach, uh, of approaching somebody. Why? I haven't done it in a long time. <laughs> I haven't done it in a long time, to be fair. Um, but when I do, I just go all in. And why should you go all in? Well, don't think about it. Just do it is the philosophy. That is the right way. If you just keep thinking, the more you, the more you focus on those thoughts, the more you focus on that energy of that nervousness, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's just, it's gonna crash. It's, it's, it's gonna crash, you're going to crash. You're not going to get the success that you want. You're not going to, you, you may end up even actually just literally your, your, your soulmate, a soulmate who is here to teach you, the person whom you're going to spend the rest of your life with. That person could literally be right there in front of you. They could be across the bar from you. They could be on the other side of the road. If you fancy talking to them, go and talk to them, okay? One thing I'm particularly an, adv uh, an advocate of here, especially in, in terms of my spiritual space here is, do not go and approach everybody that you see, right? Have value. Ask yourself what, what your self value is. Go out and do the work before and understand what your self value is. Don't just go and approach somebody just because you like it. If you have a feeling, and in, you know, there's a feeling, you get this feeling. Once you get in touch with your inner self and your feeling, it will start flowing. It's energy that's unblocked you'll start to get a sense and you'll think, mm, yeah, I feel like going and approaching that person. That is the person you go and approach because you're already set up in here and in here and orically. You're set up energetically, you're set up emotionally, you're, you've set yourself up mentally to go and approach that person. People will feel your energy. Whether they're attuned or not, they will feel your energy. This isn't woo-woo, right? Some of you may class this as woo-woo. If you do, that's fine, no judgment but it is energy regardless. You will feel, you can just walk into them and feel when somebody gives you a bad vibe. It's, it's no different, but because you feel that there's a magnetic pull towards that person, it will make it a lot easier, trust me. So save yourself for someone who is worth it. Don't just go and approach any, you know, don't, don't do what these pickup artists have told you, right? Pickup artists are absolutely ridiculous. They are cruel. They're horrible. I'm not here to name and shame, right? But there are some things from that world which some of the skills, far and few, that you can take on board. The approach of just go, the idea of just going and approaching everybody, you know, that you see, no, that's not the way to do it. You need to approach somebody with whom you feel a connection to. You need to approach somebody, and ideally somebody um, who you feel a pull to, right? There will be a pull. 
You need to trust yourself. You need to trust yourself and believe in yourself that you're worthy of it, okay? So don't just think, just do it. Avoid these BS chat up lines completely. Oh, so you're taller than me. Wow, no matter how many times we, look, we argue with each other, I will never look down at you. You can literally do that. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Does it work for some people? May, it may work for, for, a, you know, for a lady or a guy who's taller than you, right? It may work for you. Um, personally, I wouldn't. It's, it's, probably, <laughs> it's probably something you could say as a joke later on when you've already established that you're dating them. You could say, yeah, I could have come up to you and said, you know what, how many times we argue, I'll never look down at you. And she'll probably turn around and say, oh my God, you are so ridiculous. But you can use that in a flirtatious way once you're already on a date with them. And you could have said, yeah, I could have used that, but I didn't. Um, here's a tip. Make eye contact and breathe. Making eye contact is crucial. The number of times that I've done it, um, I actually did it quite recently in a, in a, um, in a coffee shop um, when I went, to hang out, I went to hang out with my guys, my guy friends. <laughs> um, I sat in this coffee bar, really nice place. And as soon as when I walked in, I was just looking around and I just locked eyes with this girl. I locked eyes with her. Uh, she locked eyes with me. And I was just sat there talking away to my guys. And when she left with her friends, she got up and looked over, over her shoulder. She paused at the door in the archway. She looked around the door and she looked at me for about a good second and she walked away. Walked away. Um, did I approach her? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Why didn't I? Well, to be honest, her approach anxiety got me. Because as I said, it's, it hasn't been for, it's been a while. It's been a while for me. Um, and I'm actually working on myself as well. I don't want to just go up to all, any old Tom Dick or Harry, you know, just any old person to just uh, walk away with their number. Because you know, when you, I feel that when you do it from that kind of place, you're doing it from a place of ego. You're not doing it because you're genuinely attracted to that person. Okay. It's not, it, sh it should be like a calling. It should be a feeling, a draw. You should feel be magnetically drawn to that person. It should be a feeling like, I don't know what it is about you, but I just want to come and talk to you. It should be that kind of feeling. Next point, be straight up and just go and approach them. Personally, what I find what's easier for me is when I make eye contact and she looks, and she looks, um, she looks back at me, there's a gaze and it locks for about two or three seconds. Because to me, that is basically her conveying to me. Her feminine is conveying to me, I want you to come and talk to me. I'm giving you permission. You don't have, it's not a case of, oh, you need to seek external validation from her. No, it's just that she's feeling energetically, she's feeling comfortable. She doesn't know why. She might have no idea why, you, why, you, why you're giving, but you're giving off that vibe. You're giving off that energy. And so she thinks, hmm, he's interesting or she's interesting. Why don't you come and talk to me? I'm gonna give you a hint. So she'll lock eyes with you. She might even smile, look back at you, do it. She's literally inviting you to go and talk to her and that is your cue. Personally, that's what works for me. The advantage of doing that is you don't end up doing this whole pickup artist thing where you go and talk to everybody else, which yes, it does help you develop immunity to rejection. But what you're doing is energetically, you're giving your energy away to everyone. You're saying that this is, you're lowering your value because you think, oh, I'm so, I'm so low in value that I have to go and talk to everybody. That's an energy of desperation. That's a vibration of desperation. You do not want to do that. You're basically saying to the universe, I'm willing to give my energy away. Just be straight up and just say to them, I saw you from afar from over or from over there. And I just felt like coming and talk to you. Um, and I just wanted to introduce myself. Hi, my name's Nim. Welcome back to my channel. And I'm here to cast a light on your shadow. I don't, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. That's probably not the best way to approach somebody. Here's a trick. You could also tell him or her that you're nervous, right? You could just say to them, look, I wanted to come and talk to you. Uh, I've mustered the courage and be honest, just if you don't do it very often, again, your words will carry your vibration. They'll sense it. I don't do this very often. You're attractive. I don't know why. I just wanted to come and talk to you. My name's Nim and I wanted to introduce myself. So yeah, you could uh, just literally, and by, by, by saying to the other person, I'm feeling a little bit nervous, the other person will probably think, okay, well, at least he's my, he or she, he, usually he, but he or she, they have mustered the courage to come and talk to me. That is hot, that's attractive. Um, polarity, masculine takes the initiative, feminine calls him towards, or them towards her. So the polarity then starts to flow. Once there's polarity, 
vibration flows a lot faster. Energy um, is given off. You start to exude confidence, they pick it up. They pick up your confidence, right? So you can use the energy to your advantage. Critical point that I would like to address here is um, nice guy psychology, right? Nice guys will, th will try and use this whole thing about, oh, I'll be the nice guy, uh, you know, I'll, I'll play it safe, I'll try and approach it and, you know, she'll, she'll probably think, oh, well, my, my best friend's uh, an idiot, um, but I'm the nice guy, I'm the one with a halo on my head and I'll try and approach. Um, you could do that, it might work, but trust me, it doesn't work for very long. Um, what I would say is change this psychology from nice guy psychology to adopting good guy psychology. What is good guy psychology? Good guy psychology is bad guy psychology plus nice guy psychology, which is good guy psychology. Good guys sit in the middle between bad guys and nice guys. Good guys are the confident assertive. They have the bad boy archetype in them. They have kind of like the, the, the masculine aggr aggression in them. However, they're actually calm and gentle and they do it in a way that makes the feminine feel safe in her energy. She feels safe, okay? The other person, the recipient, will feel safe. Um, one of the things you also need to accept is not every approach is going to be acceptable. So it's okay to get rejected. It is, it's fine. I, God, the number of times that I've been rejected, it's fine, honestly. Being rejected will actually teach you two things. Number one, it will actually say to you, you can take away from the experience and say, well, number one, give yourself a pat on the back, right? Give credit to yourself. You've approached and you faced a fear. This is the way to look at it. You have faced a fear like you take cold showers. Is it nice taking a cold shower in the middle of winter? Heck no. I do it. I'm sure some of you do it as well. But what is it doing? It is pushing you beyond your boundary. You're pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. It's still a win. The fact that you took the effort to go and talk to somebody is a win. That's number one. Number two, the other person will get the impression that you actually, you're somebody who is willing to be a bit vulnerable. Now, high valued, high quality people will always want to see some sort of vulnerability. They don't want to see you read to spill out your, your, you know, your entire life history to them all at once, but being a little bit vulnerable periodically is quite nice. They get to see a different side to you. They get to see a different side to your shadow. Um, I recently went on a date uh, with somebody um, and one of the things um, we, we did, uh, my, my, my date did, she, she actually said to me um, uh, that she, she likes a guy to be, she said, be vulnerable, show me your shadow. Um, that was so captivating for me because it was like, she was literally saying to me, come and show me your shadow. Be vulnerable, show me who you really are. I want to see your ugly side. Many people will think, well, that's, that's a bit dangerous. It isn't. That's a great thing to have because that person's saying, um, I'm willing to accept you unconditionally with no, no judgment. So come and show me your shadow, be vulnerable. By going up to that person and saying, um, I'm being a bit nervous about this, I'm sorry. Uh, I normally don't do this, but I saw you from afar. I wanted to come and speak to you because I think you look very attractive uh, or you look very pretty and I wanted to come and introduce myself. Hi, my name's Nim, pleasure to meet you. And one of two things is gonna happen. Either she's, he or she, or she, they are going to say yes or they're going to say no. It is going to be on or off, one or zero, true or false light, dark, whatever you want to call it, it will end up being one result or the other. The result is not in your hand, okay? Understand this, the result is not in your hand. Carrying out the action is. So maybe that person might not be the right energetic vibration for you, that's why they've turned around and said no to you. Accept it, it is the best thing you can do. In fact, you could actually use the rejection to your advantage in a third way, which is Wishing that person well, verbally just say, okay, that's fine. She might say, well, I've got a boyfriend or he might say that I'm committed. That's fine, not a problem. I wish you the best. It was a pleasure meeting you. Have a great day. Walk away because, and it's not a case of, oh, she's gonna turn around and come back to me. Say, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. No, if they do that, if they do that, if somebody then comes back to you and says, look, sorry, my friend was only kidding. You should turn around and say, no, that's fine. I don't play mind games, sorry, but 
thank you. It was nice meeting you. Walk on. You should have that degree of honor and, uh, and honesty within you because you have to have that self-value. You have to have that self-value. Um, I have not heard of anyone do that, but you never know. We are a human species. We are evolving. People, the, the dating mechanism, the dating game is evolving. So it may occur. Um, just be prepared to accept that not everybody is going to want to accept you. It's fine. Things happen. Also, don't be spiteful to somebody who rejects you because remember being spiteful, remember law of attraction and karma. Then what you put out to the universe is what you're gonna manifest back. So wish them well, wish them that, that they have a wonderful relationship with their person. And what you're doing is essentially is you're using the rejection to manifest good karma. You're manifesting good attraction, good energy because you're saying to the universe, I accept this person's rejection. I do not expect, I, do, I don't, Resent it. I I've, I show no uh, respite. I no hold respite. I don't do not hold any negativity towards this person. So you're actually putting out the energy that's good for you, for you. But remember, if they like I said, if the minute if you do encounter a manipulator or narcissist and they do start to come back around to you know, ah, oh, sorry, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, you draw a boundary. You self empower. Draw a boundary. And say that's fine. Thank you very much. But you told me that you were already taken. I have self worth and value. Thank you very much. I wish you well. Cut them off, walk on. You have to self-empower. Enjoy the process. Enjoy it as much as possible. You see, even like for me, I'm making these YouTube videos and I've realized something in recent times. Um, again, from some of the book material that I've been reading, I've realized when you start to enjoy the process of doing something, you end up manifesting miracles anyway <laughs> because you're in alignment with what's right for you. And this is something I picked up from um, Esther Hicks, um, Abraham, when she channels uh, Spirit Guide Abraham. And it's so true. It just makes common sense. When you're vibrationally aligned into a certain vortex, when you're in the vortex and you're vibrationally aligned with what's right for you, you don't even have to try. <laughs> you literally, you just be yourself. You crazy nutty self. You just put yourself out there and magic starts to happen. It's the same process, the thing with dating. Just enjoy the process, you know, enjoy the process of meeting people. Enjoy the process of putting yourself up there. Don't focus on, oh, I'm gonna meet someone. For example, yesterday it was my uh, friend of mine, my work colleague, um, it was his 60th birthday and uh, we all went to the beach. Did I go to this um, surprise party for, um, did I, did I attend it with the intention that, oh, I'm gonna meet somebody nice today? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't because my intention was, I'm going there to celebrate my friend's 60th birthday. I'm going there to celebrate his special day. Um, I'm going there to catch up with some old, you know, with some friends that, you know, work colleagues that I don't see very often. So I actually just said it is, you know what? I am grateful for this opportunity because it's helped me deal with my mental health. I'm rather than sitting cooped up in my flat on a weekend where I've got no interaction with somebody, I've got an opportunity to go and just be social and enjoy the celebration. That is what I'm grateful for. And yeah, I had a great time yesterday. It, it <laughs> I, I talked to, I met a couple of new people, you know, it was, it was amazing. Um, so, you know, when you, when, you, when you start to enjoy the process of just talking to people, um, if in, in this case specifically, if you enjoy the process of actually approaching somebody, things become easier for you. Use that to your advantage. Now, what you could do alternatively is you could um, reaffirm to yourself, you feel into the energy when you see somebody um, of just going and talking, when, you, when you're about to go and approach or talk to him or her, you could do. Um, you can just feel into the energy and reaffirm to yourself in their mind, I am worthy of love. I am worthy of being attractive to others. I am worthy. My inner child is worthy of affection. Whatever works for you. You can just, you can reaffirm it into your mind when you're about to approach and just keep saying it in your head. If you need to mumble it, I'm worthy. I am worthy. I am worthy. I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy. I am attractive to other people. People do find me attractive. Just keep saying that. But don't go up into person's face and say, um, hi, I'm worthy, I'm worthy, I'm really worthy, I'm really worthy. No, don't do that. <laughs> it's going to be weird, right? Do not do that. Um, but, you know, you could always just go in, in your mind, you know, just take a breather, you know, 
don't do this whole thing about your friends like, go on, get it down, you get, knock your drink back and then go and approach them. You can do if that's what you want to do. I'm not here to preach each to their own. If that's what you want to do, it works for you, it does. But alcohol confidence is not true confidence. Confidence comes from here, here, and in here, right? It comes from within, it's internal. How do you gain the confidence? Do the inner work. Find what your shadows are, find what your fears are, embody them, embrace them, Make your anxiety your ally. Make it your greatest teacher. Make it your best friend because that is what's going to help you expand your comfort zone and grow. And if you get successful, walk away with their number with pride. Don't do this whole thing like, oh, take three days to message them back. No, that is not you. Those are all games. You do what you feel is right for you. If you're on the bus and you're going home from the city and you think, right, I'm gonna message her, just message her, just say, hi, it was nice to meet you. If she doesn't get back to you or he, she doesn't get back to you, don't say, you know, whatever, something bad. Just say, okay, wasn't meant to be. Let them go. They've actually done you a favor because by not getting back to you, if they were somebody who was taken, if they were somebody who was not reliable or trustworthy, they possibly could have broken your heart. The fact that they didn't come back to you has actually done you a big favor. They have saved you a whole heap of heartache. Isn't that a winner's game? Also, one thing I would also recommend is not to bother with Instagram or Facebook. Now, sometimes some people might, this whole new thing of people saying, oh, I don't want to give you my number, um, but you know, you, you, can, you can find me on Instagram. Just if you're, again, if you're the one, usually the masculine, if you're the masculine, you're, you, you're interested in getting, you're interested in getting to know them for who they are. Instagram is not the place. People say, oh, but you know, you could see pictures of it. Yeah, that's possible. That is possible. You do have the advantage. But what do you want to do? Do you want to message her on Instagram, be a follower of hers or do you, uh, or him? Or do you actually want to tell them what, how you really feel? Get it off you. Get it off your chest. Otherwise, you'll always think you'll be playing the game in your head. If only, if only, if only I'd say, ask them for the number. What if, what if? That's worse. That is torture. Do not do that. Do yourself a favor, be straightforward. Don't be right in their face and say things like that. <laughs> Don't do that. Just be straight to the point and just say, look, I'm so-and-so and I, you know, I met, yeah, you know, I met you. I'd like to have your number, please. Uh, you know, be polite. Just say, look, I'd like to have your number, please, if, we, if you'd like, and let's meet up for a coffee. Um, just be polite about it. If he or she is equally polite, if they're of the right same vibrational um, match for you, they'll give it to you. They'll be like, yeah, sure, um, okay. Here's my number. Um, can I just call you? Just drop your message, yeah? Did you get it? Yeah, okay. Well, pleasure meeting you. Um, and we'll catch up, we'll, I'll message you and we'll catch up soon, right? And walk away. Um, or just do whatever you feel, just say, yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll arrange a date or something. Be honest about it. Because the number of people that do all this thing, oh, but we can be friends on Facebook and Instagram. Do you really want to be friends with them? The answer is a plain and simple no. The idea of going to approach somebody is to tell them that you find them attractive. You don't want them to put you on the friend zone. If they're willing to put you in the friend zone, that's fine. That's their prerogative, that isn't yours. You need to learn to have some self-worth and walk away from that and just say, that's fine, thank you very much. I don't do Instagram, I don't do Facebook. So that's fine, no problem at all. It's been a pleasure meeting you, I wish you well. Take care, bye. Walk off. Because it might make that person think, oh, I've missed an opportunity. Yeah, well, you blew it. That's, you, that's, that's on them. That wasn't on you. That was completely on them because they've chosen, right, to lower their own value, to lower their own vibration, their own energy, right, thinking that they could try and manipulate you. You just said, no, this is my, and you're not being, you're not being counter manipulative. You're just saying, no, I'm just holding my energy. This is who I am. I'm a happy-go-lucky, joyful person, teeming with life. Abundance is my, 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 my middle name. Luck, fortune, and fame. Whatever your, your, your affirmation is, right? That's where you are. That's where they are, right? You're on two different scales. You have upped your game. You've decided to move on and do yourself a favor. That's what you call practicing self-love, ladies and gentlemen. So, this is the end of the video. Thank you for making it this far. It's pretty bit, it was a bit of a long one. Um, but as you can tell, dating is actually one of those things, the masculine feminine dynamics is one of those topics that I do love talking about. I'm quite passionate about it. And I'm sure you're passionate about learning, as are we all. So um, I would really like you to drop a comment below. If you could like, share and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to share some experiences. I'll learn, others will learn. Um, we all learn, we are a community. 
and take care and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.